uh, Hugh Sun. A lot to unpack, Hugh. Uh, you do say the main takeaway, though, is that the investment case for banks, which a lot of people were doubting, uh, is now intact. Yeah, I would say so, Carl. Great to be with you. So what you saw today out of J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, is that their net interest income ju jumped by 45 to 50 percent at each bank. What does that tell you? It tells you that even if the mortgage business is in the dumps, that investment banking is still, you know, uh, very slow because the IPO market's closed, it doesn't matter. But the main core activity of what they do, which is to earn a spread between what they pay depositors and what they can earn from either investments or making loans, that that spread is still very healthy and is getting better, actually, in some ways. You know, the thing that is pumping J.P. Morgan today is they actually said that net interest income is going to be $7 billion higher this year. So it's going to be $81 billion versus the $74 billion uh, guidance just a few months ago. And that's, that's really pushing the stock up. That, that is based, Carl, on the assumption that there's going to be interest rates cut later on in the year, and essentially that they're going to have to, that J.P. Morgan is going to be able to pay less to some of their savers, less of these hot money, really high CD rates later on in the year as rates go down. What happened with PNC, Hugh? I, th I thought it was a good quarter. Yeah, I mean, look, PNC is another story. I mean, they, they are one of the one of the bigger regionals in this space. And, you know, I haven't covered that closely, but, you know, I, I do know that they're exposed certainly to some of the things that we're concerned about in CRE, certainly some of the things that we're concerned about in terms of deposit flight, and that they're not in the same position as the J.P. Morgans and the, and the Wells Fargo's of, of the world in terms of being a, uh, a sort of a flight to safety uh, benef beneficiary. Hugh, uh, it feels like, you know, Diamond had an opportunity on the call this morning to <clears throat> warn us about the rest of the space from which we've not yet heard. Uh, but his commentary was more surgical, like, yeah, maybe there need to be tweaks to regulation, but not, in his words, not a revamp. Yeah, yeah, Carl, he, he said a couple of things of note. He said that, uh, and I assume that his intel is, is very good being Jamie Diamond, but he said that you're going to actually see really good results out of most regional banks starting next week. And that, you know, uh, over the long term, and obviously in his letter last week, he said, you know, the regional banking crisis, it ain't over yet. And what that means, I think, you know, in the follow-up today was, Jamie Dimon said there could be a few more banks to topple. So I think, you know, the regional banking readout is mostly good. And then there are going to be a few who have, you know, great weaknesses based on the fact that their balance sheets are you know, holding these unrealized losses and that they have pressure on their deposit base, Carl. The other big concern going in, and there were a lot of them, <clears> Hugh, <throat> about the economy was that these banks would just stop lending, right? And that, and that everyone was worried about credit tightening and, and rising standards. And I thought the commentary on the economy from a lot of these bank CEOs was actually very benign, considering they've been a negative bunch before. Yes, they are. So they're still making loans. And, and you have to understand that they don't bank everybody in the country. They are preferentially banking, you know, the, the people who are generally better off, higher income folks, people with actual assets to their name. And so, you know, they feel like these people are good credits. They're going to continue. Uh, Jimmy Dimon was asked this about, about a potential credit crunch. And he said, you know, we, we aren't going to, you know, drastically uh, pull back on credit. He did, however, hint that there is a risk that the banking system as a whole pulls back. Uh, because as we get closer to the recession, people are going to be risk off. Hey, finally, Hugh, any uh, read throughs on Goldman, Morgan, Stanley next week when we start paying a little more attention to capital markets activity? I, I'm going to say that they're looking pretty good today because if you saw the results out of fixed income at, at both JP Morgan uh, and some of the other banks, uh, they look really good. They, they actually outperformed JP Morgan, did by roughly $400 million, exceeding uh, expectations on fixed income. And as you know, Goldman and Morgan Stanley both have sizable trading operations. They're going to look pretty good there, Carl. Hugh, appreciate it. A good wrap-up. And there's a look at what, uh, we're, what's coming our way in the next five sessions. Uh, Hugh Son.